welcome to the second episode of Games from the Archive, where we browse through our website and dive into games from the past, games that you loved and games that we loved from the games that we had on the site, from consoles to arcade and beyond. So this week we are delving into the classic Golden Axe on the Mega Drive. So we're delving into the videos on the site. There's a variety of them. Uh, this is the main one within the page, which is a playthrough. There's also another playthrough uh, on the bottom half of the page. And this is on the Mega Drive. Some of the images we've got in there are a bit of a mix, uh, showing the influence, obviously, of the arcade. Uh, got some screenshots there from the arcade, as you can see, as well as uh, the actual Mega Drive version, which is very close. There's some cover art there, which you're pretty familiar with, uh, on the power side and the start screen. So let's uh, not hang around and get into some of the history of this game and some of the memories, because you've been sharing those on Twitter, Instagram, and a bit on Facebook, uh, which you want to include into these reviews a bit more as well. So it's not just about us. It's more an interactive thing. So let's pick up on a few of that. Let's talk about what you guys thought first. So Woof Woof Girl on Instagram says, um, playing it in the corner shop uh, in the UK, which also had Rastan 2, is one of the most mind-blowing gaming experiences of my life. 20 years later, he held the top score in the world on Xbox Live Golden Axe for a short while. It's pretty amazing. I am VC also on Instagram says uh, not being able to make the jump to the other side of Turtle Bridge because your partner wouldn't come in front of the screen. I think uh, we all know that one when we're trying to play two player. It's a good one. Quite a lot here on Twitter. So we've got Steve uh, Real. I spelled that right. Remembers completing this on a ferry trip coming back to France uh, on those ferry trips they uh, used to get back in the 80s and 90s. Don't know whether they still go on now. Um, Apologies about some of his pronunciation. We've got uh, Tengu Shi, who says, uh, again on Twitter, I remember playing it first as a demo from SC format. Um, that demo definitely got some heavy usage uh, while he waited for his parents to buy. Uh, we've also got here Dustin Quinn Comic Boy, who says, uh, me and my brother, Jericho Galactic, had it on the Dreamcast, and we used all our lives getting to and beating Death Adder and um, carries on to say, and then there was another boss after him, which, uh, yep, we all know about. Uh, Lord Jalapeno, some quite uh, interesting names here. The level was set uh, on a turtle's back, and the little blue pixies that used to hit to get the potion bottles, yep, uh, one of our favourite moments there. Charlene Elizabeth, um, trying to kick the potions and food out of the bags at the end of the levels. Bastards running about, yep, that was, uh, we all know about that. Um, Ricardo de Soli, good memories, the story is nice, uh, I think it would be a nice animated cartoon, TV series or movie, um, I'm not sure, uh, I think there might be something out there on that, so, um, guys comment below. Sorex Space, uh, I remember it being difficult, but a charming AI for fire breathers and hoping for the best. Uh, we've also got uh, Barbarossa Telmo, again these are all Twitter. I spent a long time playing this game on arcade machines. Great days, great memories. Golden Axe from golden era of Sega. Alex Holmes, uh, coming home from school to find my folks who bought it for me. Best surprise ever. And we've got uh, custom PC Max, the most distinct memories. So little bastard gnomes still in my magic, and the game was fun. Uh, King Monkey uh, is uh, saving up the, dra the potions to see the dragon fire. And just finally one more, because there's a lot we've had actually on this, so it's an interesting question to ask out there, what you thought of the memories, and then putting them in these uh, videos. It's great to hear your feedback. And just finally, El Vertedero, uh, the coin up in a bar in my small hometown, amongst a lot of people drinking and smoking and a bunch of lads playing this. Yes, I think um, that was definitely played in the 80s, if uh, that was the case. Thanks for um, those memories, they're fantastic. And, um, on the next uh, uh, episodes, we'll be asking the question as well, what your memories are, it's, uh, it's great. But let's get a little bit more back into the uh, game itself.
So onto the game itself, this was uh, a real classic late 80s hack and slash from the very beginning with the pumping music soundtrack. It was a fast paced action game that got you in the mood from the get go. Golden Axe had everything, it had magic, it had dragons, it had lots of different creatures and monsters from mythology and influences of role playing games, movies, all sorts kind of wrapped into one uh, and those big bad guys uh, throughout and obviously at the end of level to take you down. At the beginning you picked your uh, best character and uh, that was either a axe battler, barbarian, Gilius Thunderhead, the dwarf or Tyrus Flair who is a, an amazing Amazon fighting woman. <laughs> So focusing on those three heroes, you could wield your axe, you could uh, pick up your broadsword, or you could be Tyrus Flair, um, whose parents were actually killed by Death Adder, so interesting backstory. This is essentially a revenge story with these characters. So classic moments uh, kind of influencing the game, as well as role playing, is things like Jason and the Argonauts with the skeletons rising from the earth, along with jumping on the back of mini little dragons and breathing fire at your enemies. This was, um, for me, it's more of a two-player game and with this uh, you're going to have uh, some serious fun. Um, it's a game not to be missed in the Mega Drive. It probably was one of the closest ports that you could ever see at that particular time. Um, influenced heavily obviously by the arcades. Sega were king of the arcades in the 80s and porting games like this from the arcade into the consoles was very much the order of the day. Multiplayer is a must um, and I'd highly recommend it as a game, if you haven't played it already, you pick up. Um, it's fairly easy to master in terms of the actual gameplay and uh, fairly reasonably good to complete. Uh, it's quite a nice result at the end, I'm not going to spoil it too much, but I'm sure as many of you out there have completed it. So I hope you enjoyed uh, this second episode, We've taken a slightly different angle with getting some of your feedback uh, from the game before we actually put these videos out. Let us know what you think of that. Um, if you want us to do more of one thing, uh, just let us know, or less of the other. Um, and we'll be doing our next episode, which will be out uh, next Sunday. So happy gaming, guys, and see you out there.